Let's talk about how to solve a logistic growth model application problem together. For this particular problem, we have a 2,000 gallon tank that can support no more than 150 of these guppies. Initially, we're told that six guppies are going to be introduced into this tank. We're given an equation that represents the rate of growth for this population, and that's going to be this equation of dp dt is equal to 0.0015p times a quantity of 150 minus p. Specifically for this example, our time is going to be in weeks. Before we get started on some actual calculations, let's make sure we know our formulas first. So we have our general logistic formula, and if we have this dp dt, that's going to be equal to some constant k multiplied by p, multiplied by the quantity of m minus p. Now m is going to represent our carrying capacity, so that's going to be the maximum capacity of that tank, and that in this case is going to be 150, because that's the maximum capacity of the tank. And k is going to be that value in front of p, so in this case we have the 0.0015, so we know that's going to be our constant here, so we're going to say it's going to be 0.0015. And a third variable that's important here is going to be capital A, that's going to be the constant that we're going to find using the initial conditions. Now this t over here does represent time, and we know time is going to be in weeks, so we can say our initial condition here is going to be p of zero, or when we have zero weeks that we had six guppies that were in this tank. Basically a little bit later we can use this initial condition of when t is zero then p is equal to six, and we can use that to find out this a value, so that's what that means by using these initial conditions. So when the directions here say to find a formula for the guppy population in terms of t, we have to go ahead and write an equation in this form. To do that though, we're going to start off with this equation that we were given right over here, which models the rate of growth, and let's see how we can relate that to this equation over here. So here's the original equation that we were given. You can see here that k does equal this 0.0015, and we can also see that this m value, or the carrying capacity, is going to be 150 guppies. Now that we see that we have this equation in this form, Let's see if we can use that information and write a formula for the guppy population in terms of t, which is using this equation right over here. Now if we go ahead and substitute in that 150 in for m, that's going to be right in the numerator, and then we don't know this a value yet, we're going to use the initial conditions in a little bit to find that out, and we can see here that we have this m times k in the denominator in that exponent, so here is m and here is k, we just substituted those values in. This p is going to represent the population at a given time. And this t over here represents the time measured in weeks. In a moment, we're going to go ahead and use that initial condition where we have p of t, or the population given in a certain amount of time, or in this case, the initial condition of saying when we had zero weeks, or in the beginning, we had a population of six guppies. All right, so let's go ahead and take this equation here, and let's make a little bit more space. And let's go ahead and solve for a. All right, so getting rid of t and p, we know for the initial conditions that t is going to be zero, so I'm gonna put a zero here, and at zero weeks we had a population of six, so let's go ahead and put a six in. Now if we go ahead and evaluate, this entire exponent here is going to become zero, and remember that e to the zeroth power, or anything to the zeroth power, is going to be equal to one, so one times this a value is just going to be a. If that's the case, we can just go ahead and write that we have six is equal to 150 on top, and then in the bottom, we're just going to have this 1 plus a. Now, if we go ahead and multiply both sides by 1 plus a, we're going to get 6 plus this 6a on the left side of the equation. And on the right side, we're just going to have this 150. Then if we go ahead and subtract 6 from both sides and then divide both sides by 6, we should find out that a is going to equal 24. This was the last piece of information we needed for our formula. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in right here. Now if we go ahead and rewrite our formula, now that we know the value of a, we're going to have this p is equal to 150 on top. And on bottom, we're going to have this 1 plus that 24. Then we're going to multiply that by e raised to the what power? Well, instead of writing both of these numbers out in front of the t, let's just go ahead and multiply them together. That's going to end up being this negative 0.225. And then we can keep that t right next to it. Alright, so this right here is going to be our formula for part A, which is just telling us the guppy population in terms of T. Now let's go back and remember what was part B. Now part B was asking us, how long will it take for the guppy population to be 100 or even 125? 
Now, what are they asking us when they ask us about how long? Well, specifically, they're asking us to solve for this T value, right? That's going to be the amount of time measured in weeks and specifically under what conditions? Well, the first condition they want us to solve for is when the population is 100. So we're going to solve for T when P is equal to 100. And then we're going to go ahead and solve for T again. But in another case, this population is going to be 125 guppies. So let's go ahead and use this formula that we found in part A to figure out how long it's going to take to get to those two different populations. All right, let's see here. So since we're basically going to be doing the same thing twice, let's see if we can find out T when P is 100 and when P is 125 or when the population is 125 guppies. So for both of these scenarios, we're going to go ahead and just change P to 100, then change P to 125. So this first step is pretty straightforward. We're just substituting in 100 in for P and also 125 in for P. I'm just gonna go ahead and write them as fractions so we can go ahead and cross multiply to deal with these fractions a little bit easier. So we have this proportion, so we can go ahead and cross multiply and use cross products to go ahead and get rid of the fractions. This is what we're gonna get for one of the cross products. And for our other cross product, it's a little bit cleaner. We just have one times 150. So that's just gonna equal this 150. Now in the other scenario, when the population is 125, we can also use those cross products. And so this is what we're gonna get for the cross product over here. And our second cross product is also gonna be cleaner here. It's just one times that 150. So one times 150, we'll just write 150. All right, so for the equation on the left here, I'm just gonna go ahead and divide this left side by 100 and divide the right side by 100. And for the other equation, let's go ahead and divide the left side of the equation by 125 and the right side by 125 as well. Now for our scenario on the left, if we go ahead and do that, that 150 divided by 100 is really just going to be 1.5. So I'm gonna go ahead and just write it like that. And for our equation on the right, that 150 divided by 125 is going to be 1.2. Then for the equation on the left, let's go ahead and take away one from both sides of the equation. And then we can go ahead and divide the left side by 24 and divide the right side by 24. That way we can just isolate this e to the negative 0.225t power. Now, if we do that, we're going to have just this on the left side. 1.5 minus 1 is 0 0.5, then 0 0.5 over 24 is the same thing as 1 over 48. If you just go ahead and double the top and the bottom just to kind of keep a clean fraction here. Now for our scenario on the right, when the population is 125, we can go ahead and do similarly, just take away one from both sides and then divide the left side by 24 and divide the right side by 24. And if we do that, we'll isolate this e to the negative 0.225t again. Now the 1.2 minus one is going to be 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 over 24. If you times top and bottom both by five, that's really just the same thing as one over 120. So that's a fairly clean fraction here. All right, next, let's just go ahead and take this equation and then just take the natural log of both sides. Let's do that for both of these. That natural log is just going to cancel out with that E because it's base E. So if we do that on the left side, we're gonna get this negative 0.225T. And on the right side, we're gonna have LN of this one over 48. Now for our other scenario, if we take the natural log of both sides, that E is gonna cancel out on the left side again. So we're gonna get this negative 0.225T on the left side. And on the right side, the natural log of one over 120 is just gonna be one over 120. Now finally, if we go ahead and divide both sides by T, we can see that T is going to be equal to this LN of this one over 48. Again, this is just gonna be the exact answer for now. We can go ahead and plug this into a calculator to actually get the time. Let's be divided by a negative 0.225 on the bottom. And then similarly to the right here, if we divide both sides by that negative 0.225, we're gonna get that time here is gonna be equal to the natural log of one over 120 divided by that same negative 0.225. Now, if we go ahead and plug this into a calculator, we're gonna get in this first scenario for when the population reaches 100, that's gonna be about 17.21. So that's how many weeks it's going to take to reach the population. And then over here, if we plug this into a calculator, we should get about 21.28. So it's gonna take a little bit longer to reach a higher population. So that makes sense. And so these would be the two lengths of time that we were solving for. All right, so putting this all together, 
we used our what? We used our general logistic formula here to identify what M and K were. Once we knew what M and K were, we went ahead and used that initial condition where we knew that uh, there were six guppies in the very beginning. So using all that information together, we were able to solve out what uh, A was here. And so once we found out A was equal to 24, we could write this formula, which really just told us the guppy population in terms of T. Once we had that information, we wanted to find out how long it was going to take to reach a couple populations. So we did two hypotheticals if the population was 100 and if the population was 125. So we just plug those in for P to solve for each of those time values. So we went ahead and used that formula to find out that if the population was equal to 100, it would take about 17.21 weeks. And if the population is 125, then it would take about 21.28 weeks. And that wraps up this video dealing with some logistic growth. Now, if you found this video helpful, please consider letting me know in the comment section down below and also sharing this with a classmate or friend who might also find it helpful. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing.